Hi and welcome to another video from Pal of Toys. I'm sorry I haven't put any content up recently but with Christmas um, and with work I've been a little bit busy. Hopefully with the new year I'll be able to get back into the swing of it. Um, really pleased to be up to 67 subscribers or however many it is now. Really grateful. If at all you like this video please hit subscribe and hopefully you'll enjoy some new content that comes in the future. Today I'm going to be looking at something I've picked up on eBay over the Christmas holidays and that is another one of the talking Palitoy canines from the late 1970s. This one cost 25 quid um, and it's got some really good labels on it that are all in nice condition um, pretty much. Bit of a rip there but the colours retain there. Um, and obviously there's a bit of fading on that one but anyway he's in really nice condition so what I thought I would do is do a quick video on these Ozen voice boxes that are in the Palitoy Talking K9 if you've watched any of my previous videos you may have seen that I've restored or put together or got work in these this kind of voice box from Again, Palitoy sold toys in the 1970s, so we've done videos on Daleks, the Batmobile, there's a Z Victor 4 by Palitoy, which is the car out of Z cars, and I did a video on R2-D2. Um, speaking of R2-D2, um, if you've seen my videos, you'll know that I had one that only had one leg. Um, now he's got two and in complete condition, which I'm really delighted with. So a huge thank you for Tony Harris, who after watching the R2-D2 voice box video, kindly sent me a spare leg, which did away with me having to um, do a full rebuild or remould of a new one. So Tony, you're a legend. That's how it looks now. There will be a video coming on how to de-yellow these in the coming in the coming weeks so keep an eye out for that it should be decent so these voice boxes that are made by Ozen that you'll see in these Palitoy talking canines are quite easy to see you just tip him underneath and you see this kind of like pink pink um pink model here you will never be able to pick it up on the camera maybe let's try and get it right but what you'll see there is the logo of the company that manufactures that, that's Ozen in Japan. These things opened up using this clip that you can see here. And inside um, there was the turntable for the record, which is just like that. The irritating thing with these is that this record sometimes fall out and often gets lost. So keep an eye out for that this record's present when you're buying any of these toys so that's that that record just clips on to there if you don't don't have one I have done a previous video that shows you how to cast one yourself using um, a mold and some liquid plastic so um, some things to note on here of interest are this peg here and this drive belt here First thing, if you get one of these, just pop this bottom bit open and just check that that pegs here. I've had one that's been missing. When it shuts, that peg pushes up through a hole there, which presses um, a piece of mechanism across that makes the unit work. If that peg snapped at all, it won't work. So keep an eye out for that drive belt being present um, and the... And the um, keep an eye out for that drive belt being present and that little peg so that's k9 for now these voice boxes were also used in a number of other toys from the 1970s so this is an action man life support pack um i think it came with an action with a astronaut and if i take the back off inside you will see that the voice box is identical to that of the palitoy talking k9 again we pop our battery into the unit press him shut do it up and when we hit this nothing happens because as usual with these things they've seized up or don't work for a reason um which is frustrating what you do see inside of these things is a slider 
that slider is a variable resistor. So if your battery is running too fast, you can slow the speech down by moving this slider along. I'll show you more when I get inside one of these, but again, just to make sure, let's pop my cell in, pop him shut, and he doesn't function. That's not surprising. That's been just in a box in my garage for uh, years, so um, it doesn't surprise me. So there you go, astronaut pack. Um, it also came in the Action Man field radio pack that looks something like this. So again, we turn it round. It has the old back hatch on it, which I shall slip off just like so and as you see there's this voice box again so again I'll open that pop in the battery like so shut it like that right shut it like that and again not surprisingly the thing seized up if you ever need to get into one of these be mindful that the screws are behind this bit of sticker that's on the front so that little button just pulls off um, and if you can lift that sticker up using a bit of steam or whatever then you can get to the screws otherwise you won't be able to get that voice box out of there so Action Man Field Radio and um, Astronaut Pack both use the same voice box mechanism the good thing about that is if you have one of these toys you can easily get spares for them so which is really interesting again made by Ozen I found an old doll um, an old talking palatoy doll Sally says from again the early 1970s this again uses a really similar mechanism so we lift him like so again you'll see the turntable with the record that clips on and the battery pack that is just here so again i sh also got the little sliding resistor so i shall put this battery in here shut the unit and again we have a situation where nothing happens which is a shame so that's what we've got so far we've tested three units four if you include the talking canine which i haven't actually tested yet but i shall put in a video a video i shall put in the battery just now close him up and yeah again it doesn't work um, which is typical. I'm just going to stop this camera for a minute. There'll be a brief jolt in the video and I'm going to take this voice box out and I'll show you how easy it is to get them fixed as well as um, what to look for when you're repairing one. Okay, when you're dismantling one of these, just take a screwdriver and take out these screws at the bottom. Sometimes these can be rusted in, in which case you may need to drill them out but in this case these are quite quite nice so out goes those screws here comes the final one and just a little tap and out pops the voice mechanism so i'll put the canine shell over there i may have shown this on a previous video but there's a a lever that connects into there so when you press the button on the back of the K9, it depresses this button here. That's what actually starts this, this thing up. You'll see a screw on the top here. This is something you don't need to take out. There's basically a spring under there that puts some tension on the um, diaphragm. So when the needle's playing, the sound has enough tension that the vibrations which is the sound, I think, I hope that makes sense, come up through the diaphragm. So that's what it looks like. Again, from an underneath, I've already showed you this, but you've got your turntable, you've got your drive belt, and you'll see in there the drive shaft of the motor that that belt hooks round. So when you depress that, that motor's meant to turn, which in turn turns that turntable, and um, the whole mechanism inside starts. 
something that is massively critical that I'll show you when we get inside this thing is you'll see a little metal piece of metal switching um, sprung loaded switch thing just there so that's something to keep out of if you open one of these and that's rusted off you're gonna have to buy a spare unit or locate another bit of switching metal to put that just right so to get into this thing remember you don't need to remove that um, screw so the ones you're looking for is this screw here and this screw here which I shall attempt which I will rather take out just now so here we go again inside the um, action man toys the mechanism is exactly the same and that's completely different to the one that you see inside those earlier palletoid talking Daleks. These may be a little bit stiff to pull apart like this one is. But just lift him off carefully like that. So it's basically top housing, which I'll put to one side. I mentioned earlier about a spring. Um, it goes on with the plastic piece to the top. There's actually a... A little lug at the top of this piece here that that clips into when you're putting the thing back together just like that so don't lose that spring whatever you do you've then got this diaphragm this voice diaphragm that's on two arms that basically sits over these two pegs here so it sits like that so and the whole thing is based on this lever switch that you press so if that diaphragm is sitting on those pegs and it's, that's held down, you press that button, the diaphragm lifts like that, which releases the record payer stylus, which is positioned just here. So I mentioned before that there was a variable bit of variable resistance going on here. That's the actual thing there that moves along this coil here. So obviously the more you move that either up or down it either reduces or lessens the amount of 1.5 volt that comes out of that um that comes out of that battery i always think it's worthwhile tracing this wire so you've got your motor that drives that belt and it's connected with a wire it's really flimsy this wire so be very careful with it and basically just check that you've got some form of um connection with it. I'll show you a decent trick to check this if you've got a multimeter. Okay, if you've got a multimeter, turn the setting to that one there because we're going to check the continuity on it, which basically means um, we can track whether there's a break in the wire. So I put one end on the motor just there and the other end on this. And the fact that that makes a beeping noise proves that that circuit is complete. So the wire comes out of the positive terminal of the battery, goes along there um, and into the motor, which is good. If we check this one from the other end of the battery to that motor, you won't get a connection. That's because it's switched. So if I take that one and take it to that wire, you'll see we've got continuity. But as soon as we come over to here, we also have continuity, which kind of ruins that. And that's because this switch is shut. So I mentioned before that there was a um, bit of switching wire in it. So if I open this up, like so, look at this piece here. That, that bit of that bit of plastic that's on the base just there when it's closed comes through that gap just there and moves when it's completely done it moves this anvil this rotating piece just here um, which should break that connection so I think that's completely on but so that's shut and the connection's complete. If I open it, the connection's not complete, you see. So if that peg is snapped, 
that circuit will never be complete and your toy won't talk so again okay sorry if there was a jump there the camera just um just ran out of battery what we were talking about is the continuity between this motor and this terminal of the battery area here and i've tested it and right the way through um, basically the connect complete so obviously the current goes down that wire here through this switch in metal there's a terminal here where the current then goes through so as you can see that switch is in the on position so that's why there's a constant um a constant flow of current going through it so if this um motor was working in working condition it would be spinning at this point because there's current coming through each side of this battery and it's a complete circuit so in, as it stands now that should be working um this little hammer thing here that i showed you before it's on a it's ring mounted so when when that area closes it should um it should push if that's got a connection like that should push that switch back up but at the minute for the life of me if that's not it doesn't seem to do make any difference at all but we'll see as we progress with this so how this thing works is that when the position when the toy is ready to press that needle is up there with the weight and the pressure of this diaphragm sitting on top of it holding it into place now when that is in that place you'll see i hope that it breaks that circuit there so in its generic position that um circuit is broken as soon as the button is pressed to make the toy talk this diaphragm, because of that lever there You'll be able to see that pushing that upwards, that leave a bit there. That'll lift that upwards, which will release this stylus, which will spring it back. As soon as it springs back, that circuit's complete because that switch goes back into place. And then the turntable will start rotating. And the speech will come out as that tracks it. As soon as it gets to the end, you'll see there's a little nodule on the end of that stylus arm. It'll push that. And it'll break the circuit and the whole thing will stop until it's pressed again which will lift the diaphragm that'll then spring back there connect the circuit and because of the downward pressure on from this spring and the diaphragm again it'll go through it'll read the record and when it reaches the end it'll just knock knock that switch up and therefore break in the circuit okay so that thing I can still not work out or remember why that's there, but I know if that's not in. Ah, oh, there you go. No. I don't know. I don't know with that. Um, I thought that when that was pressed up, it nudged that, so it broke that circuit, but um, clearly it doesn't. So how do we make this work? Um, well, as usual with these things, the best thing to use, in my experience, is this WD-40 fast dry and contact cleaner um, because I think after a few years this motor will have seized so and it'll just gunked up and it'll take it'll take nothing in this world to, to start this moving so I always get plenty in there plenty in there I know we've got current going into this because I've tested it so we need to work out why that isn't spinning um again if i look underneath i've got my um axle of the motor which isn't moving so carefully because this soldering is really delicate on these things pull that up now what i've done there is it's taken the and away she goes You'll see with this motor that it sits on a rubber collar that fits into there. So, annoyingly, what I've done now is knock the um, drive belt for the turntable underneath it off that. So, but what the positive thing is, I know that that's uh, I know that's spinning. So you can see if that's up properly. 
if I open this now, there you go, it shuts the motor off. That's what that arm's for, so just watch that. If I press it up, can you see? So as soon as that opens, it kills the circuit. That's what that little hammer thing is for, that little, can you see? All done by that bit of plastic at the bottom just there, can you see? So when it closes, it goes up through that hole and completes the circuit. So if that's not on, the circuit's never complete. So that's a really irritating bit of plastic, yeah. So now we've got one motor in. Um, and I'll take this drive belt. This is a lot more awkward than the Dalek one. So you've got your drive belt. You can use an elastic band for this, but getting the right torque on it is uh, really difficult. And doing this on camera is going to be difficult as well. So you've got the beginning of that axle poking through there. So just try and hook that over it. Like, look, it's actually work like that, okay? So now if I go in there, you'll see that that drive belt is around that motor axle. Then I'll wrap that around this drive belt like so. If it will go on. I'm not normally as clumsy doing this. It's purely because... So there you can see the drive belt's on. Because that's open... And that peg's not gone through there. The circuit isn't complete, but I'll close it now. And then you'll see now that that turntable is spinning. And it will continue to spin until that circuit there is broken, which is what that does. So if I open this again, that will kill it off. I shall put the speech record into there very carefully. It'll clip on. Just like that. Just like. Just like so. Can't even put the record on it. It's not a good day today. So the record sits on the turntable and I close that. So now you can see it's turning and the record player's on it. This is where this comes in important. So remember this diaphragm with the spring on? That sits just over those two lugs there and there. Just pop him on there, like so. And if I apply a really light bit of downward pressure, it should engage that stylus that you can see here. And it will put that needle into the surface of the record. And then it will go along. The record will play. Watch. And you can see because of that pressure it just forces these things off so this is really awkward so i'll try and put pressure on here then when it reaches the end that record stylus if you can see in there has broken that switching piece in there okay so it's broken the circuit so it stops if someone presses the start you'll see that that stylus has sprung back to the start, I'll then apply some force. You can see it moving along, and then it's broken that switch and it stops. This is supposedly your variable resistor, which there you go, it's reduced it somewhat. It shouldn't sound as squawky now, so let's try it again. broken circuit off so that's how simple that is it gets a bit irritating because it's constantly on but then when you open that it's fine so to put it back together can be a bit awkward 
so you need to make sure that switch is in the right place because that's what the button on the top of K9 presses into you need to make sure your spring is on just like so and then being really 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 careful you need to rehouse this thing like that um, what's critical with these things is the is the tension of the screws um, so what I do is put the screws in but really just make them as light as you can don't tighten it otherwise it really does bugger up this um, system so there you go so I'll close that oh. dead easy to do but again people look at them and because it's got more wire in it um, people get confused with it so um, to put the canine back together is a doddle you just clip this thing on here like so so he goes in there like that you make sure that the buttons in the right position you have to make sure that that tail goes in there so is that the right way yeah tail in crap camera work I apologize he slides in like so and now I should have three screws left which I do but I'm just gonna whiz tighten because I can't be bothered to <laughs> one it's more tricky than the palatoid Dalek one definitely um, but don't let it put you off if you've got one of these lying around have a play with it they're a doddle so um, there you go something that was broken now works so I've had a look at this one pre other one by Ozen the um, the doll um and i fixed it listen to this he says he's fixed it I bet someone was delighted to get that for Christmas. Um, again, if we look inside this one, I've put a battery in there. So I shot. That's either going to speed it up. So this is the astronaut one um, that you can see here. Um, I'll show you how easy it is to get it going now. 